Step number one, we try to create this configuration where there is an impedance tied between the input and the inverting input of the op-amp and an impedance tied between this inverting input to the output. We want to do this because we know how much the closed loop gain is in that situation. The output over the input is going to be minus ZF over ZI. This is a classic uh, inverse in op-amp configuration. I analyze it in my op uh, video, so you can check it out uh, later if you want. Now, 90% of the useful circuits that are of an inverting op uh, configuration type are going to be able to be reduced to something like this. Some of them can't, but they are uh, very rare. So, we transform this circuit into something like this you can see that this is the exact same as this where this node and this node are basically the same all right so it's this and this there's no resistance side between these two wires all right the voltage is the same and uh, i just wrote this so uh, like this all right for for very clear clear reason why because now i can clearly see that this is zf the uh, impedance side between the inverting input and the output, and this is a die between the input and the inverting input. Now, step number two is to find these two impedances. How much is a die? Well, I can start with either one, it doesn't really matter. ZI is the, uh, in this case, the impedance of the capacitor plus the impedance of the capacitor, this one in parallel to this resistance. How much is the impedance of a capacitor? 1 over Cs. How much is the impedance of a resistor? It's the value of the resistance, all right? R1 uh, in this case. So it's 1 over Cs plus 1 over Cs times R over 1 over Cs plus R, all right? This is a parallel configuration. Now, there is nothing uh, very complex about this. I just uh, add these two fractions in the classic ways I know. And now, this is key, and pay very close attention now, we have to take the frequency from the denominators, or wherever it appears, and place it at the nominators of the fraction. So, both the nominator and the denominator of the fraction, the frequency must be uh, not at the denominator, if that's very clear, all right? Um, was this section again? He didn't get it. All right. Now, I go to the feedback, and I say that, again, I have a resistance in parallel to a capacitor which is in series to another resistance, all right? And now, nothing but uh, the typical parallel configuration math. Again, my goal here is to take the frequency from the denominator of each uh, little fraction I have in my total fraction and put it at the nominator. I have many ways to do this. I prefer to do it like this. So we will cl see clearly where the frequencies are and how to handle them. Now, I am ready to go to step number three, where we have to say that the output of the input is going to be minus the def over to ZE. Just apply uh, my formula for the inverting configuration. Again, I put ZF this and ZI this, all right? I found them previously in step number two. And now I do nothing but algebra, this times this over this times this. So it's going to be like this. Now I just take this C2 and put it outside. I take this C4, I put it in the front. And I take this frequency and put this two in the front. Right, so now I can see clearly each individual term. 
Step number four and final step is going to be to isolate the S. We want to have always S over something by itself or S over something plus one. It's very, very, very important and imperative that we do this. Now, this is a very big fraction, all right? So it's going to be S over 1 over R force it soon, all right? You see why? Because this is going to be multiplied with this, so it's, it's, it's the same as this, the exact same. How much is this? I take 1 over C3 and put it outside, and I have 1 plus S over 1 over R3 C3. You see why? If you don't pause the video here and try to uh, understand that this, look at this very closely, it's exact same as this. It's key that we understand these uh, transformations. This is what I want. I want S over something, I don't care what, plus 1. And if this means that we have to uh, put some constant value outside, so who cares, all right? Again, I do the exact same with this, all right? This is very similar. I have the exact same uh, operation. And I do the same with the denominator. I don't have a separate S here, a separate frequency or speed. Is there a, a, the S is not the actual frequency, all right? It's the uh, angular speed. So it's going to be 1 over 3 times 1 plus s over 1 over this thing here, all right? And this is the exact same. I put c1, uh, 1 over c1 here, and the other uh, s over this thing. Now, let is simplify this with this and this with this. And my final result is this very, very large fraction. But we can realize and understand our circuit very, very clearly now. We have a very clear transfer function where we have one, two, three uh, zeros and one and two poles. And we know where they are. The two poles are here and here, and the zeros are here and here. This zero is at number is at frequency zero. Now this circuit is not very useful, but is is a very very good practice for us uh, for to understand how capacitors and other complex impedances work for our invert and op amp configurations. Now, if you have done body diagrams in the past and uh, you have taken already the control systems class, this will be very very easy to analyze you haven't, don't worry about it that much for now. These uh, are two very, very uh, classic examples on how much of a great, uh, how much, how many great things we can do with the capacitors in this configuration. We can put the capacitor between the inverting input and the output and the capacitor and the resistance between uh, the inverting input and the input of the circuit. In this case, the output of the input is going to be 1 over C1S over R1 with a minus in front. All right, you see why? Minus RF over RI. And if I write it like this and I perform an inverse Laplace operation, if after I put the input here, I get nothing but a constant value with a minus in front times the integral of the input of this configuration. And this is huge. I have put very, very sim simple, very, very simple devices connected like this, and I've managed to have an output that integrates the input with nothing but using of the analysis we have used before. We find the impedance here, find the impedance here, and then do the fraction. If you're not very familiar with Laplace operations, don't worry, I will have a video. Uh, for this too. Also, by the way, I have done another video on the integrate, a very extensive one, 
you can check it out on this channel. Now the output over the input uh, for this circuit is going to be uh, this impedance over this impedance minus 1 over C1S. And this time the uh, frequency or speed is going to be in the nominator and when I do the inverse Laplace operation uh, and I put the input over here I get nothing but uh, the output is going to be minus C1R1 times the derivative of the input over time and what I have managed to create here is nothing but a differentiator all right I can differentiate the input over time and have it as the output signal here again with very 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 simple uh, very very simple configuration here with chip devices uh, connected like this this also can work as filters all right this and uh, the integrator i can anal I analyze it in my uh, integrator video is nothing but uh, it can be it can work as a low pass filter all right a low pass amplifier I've also done a video of the differentiator. You can go ahead and check it out. I we see there that this configuration can work very very clearly as a high pass amplifier, a high pass filter. So I can do math operations. I can create filters, all sorts of great great things. And with the only knowledge that I need of how knowing how to find an impedance. Uh, Side between two points. All right, take these two points and these two points, and that's it. Subscribe to the channel for more electronics videos. Study well and take care.